you think, what you want, but you weak And we was in the field manifesting all our dreams And please don't try to play like you own when you weak Don't stun no money flow when it change like the leaves See, I know what you think, what you want, but you weak And we was in the field manifesting all our dreams And please don't try to play like you own when you weak Don't stun no money flow when it change like the leaves uh, Several benefactors from nigga chapters I need the pastor to tell the people what the spirits told me Hello and welcome back to the Hemp Stock Podcast. My name is Vartan Simonian. And I'm Joseph Fordyce Jr. And this podcast is sponsored by Knock on Hemp, an industrial hemp processor located and licensed in New York State. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by Knock on Hemp LLC. The views expressed by guests are their own and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. Knock on Hemp works with farms and businesses to source and process hemp plants into innovative and reliable alternatives to things that we use in our daily lives. KOH produces dependable everyday products, resilient building materials, and sustainable energy solutions with the aim of delivering an affordable and efficient end product to our consumers. Nice. Right, so here we are, back for episode two. How are you, Joe? Good, good. How you doing, man? You know, trying to stay healthy. On lockdown. You know, crazy times. Right. Um, just thinking of new ideas. Obviously, this is. Yeah. Just One of our uh, quarantine babies is coming right now. It's the Hempstock Podcast, so I'm glad that we got this underway. Um, but like we said, episode two, let's talk hemp applications. You're, right. uh, you're our resident uh, uh, innovation expert, so uh, what, what are we talking about today? Okay, um, so uh, some of the things um, in educating folks and keeping people keep people's minds going Um, Really, as you know, a lot of people are indoors now, you know, um, you know, my condolences out to the families that have lost people. And, you know, um, you know, in this time, we just got to stay healthy, stay safe. Um, But as we look at, you know, some of the things that uh, we can learn uh, about hemp as it's making its way mainstream. And as we talked about more uh, in the last episode, we we really focused on kind of what that mainstream looks like now. And um Let's talk about the current the current landscape of uses, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk more about uh you know kind of the different um, applications. Um, let's look at linen and clothing. Um, you know we we brushed up. Okay, and expand on that a bit. Um, but uh, overall, uh, there's a lot of great um great advantages to using um hemp, um in linen in linen as uh bedding. Um, clothing, um, you know, streetwear, outerwear, um, dresswear. Um, it's a couple different options. Um, have you seen anything um, relating to hemp in clothes or linen products? Well, I mean, uh, last time we discussed uh, a bit of that um, fabric in general, right, and kind of how uh, in the past you would see a lot of uh, maybe more what would be considered like hippie clothes, I guess, um, that people would wear, like the hoodies or t-shirts made of hemp. And, and we talked about um, how uh, hemp is better than cotton. Mm-hmm. But um, um, some of the stuff then, this should be on the screen right now, but uh, some of the stuff that you and I have been discussing lately are more kind of home things, right? So like uh, curtains and sofas and bedding right. and, uh, a lot of the the home uses, right, and that's why I think that it's interesting that you bring up uh, linen and clothing as well, as we kind of already talked a bit more on the clothing side and what people would have already expected to see from hemp, and then maybe we can discuss today what people yeah. can expect from hemp, right? In well, the first, of first, and stuff. let me give uh, let me give folks folks a couple uh, fast facts about hemp clothing. All right, so. Cool. Uh, let's start off with one. Um, hemp protects your skin by naturally filtering uh, UV light. Two, hemp protects, um, it resists bacterial growth and breathes excellently, preventing odors. Uh, three, hemp has four times the strength of cotton. It won't weaken when washed. It retains color better than any other fabric. 
five, it saves water. Hemp uses only one twentieth the amount of water as regular cotton to grow and process. Hemp also, also um, almost uses no water to grow, and um, it can usually be just be rain-fed. Uh, another fact, hemp is legal um, to grow in the U.S. Um, and also legal to import. Um, and last but not least on this uh, great site, hemp is deliciously soft on the skin and um, gets better and better uh, with each wear. So this, um, these fast facts are from nakedclothing.com. Um, just an example of, uh, some Naked of the, clothing dot com. Yeah. N- hey, um, they, you know, you know, they, they can't. Well, I like how they touched on yeah. how it feels against your body. Right. And I think that that's obviously super important with mm-hmm. anything in terms of linens or like cloth, clothing or fabric. Like. Right. And, um, when you were saying that the first thing that I was thinking of, right, is that it kind of. I see a bed that was the first thing is the sheets, right? So um, you were showing me some uh, some sites earlier with uh, with bedding and kind of telling me about uh, the advantages there. So what was what was the second fact you said, or is it the second or third? In terms of uh, on your skin, how it made your skin feel, or how. Uh, but what did it do your skin? It protects your skin um, it protects naturally your skin. Uh, from the UV light. Also, um, resists bacterial growth and breathes. So I think that's, you know, it won't mold, you know, when shirts get wet and, right. you know, in, in the process in between, um, you know, drying or whatever it is, cleaning it, um, you know, mold can't grow. And that's also something mm-hmm. pretty good that you want to have, you know, make sure you have quality with your clothes because... You never know what circumstances you can be under, you know. Um, man, yeah. it's a natural yeah. disaster. There's um, and you know, you, you a lot of your clothes gets wet. Um, having clothes that don't get damaged. Yeah. Um, that's how your mom always said you were gonna get pneumonia, right? Was uh, walking around in wet clothes. Yeah, that's another thing. Yep. All right, but no, and uh, the thing about hemp right is that it definitely um, insulates while also being breathable, which is a quality that. We will definitely be discussing later on um, with uh, home insulation and, and kind of more so in the, in the building applications there. But um, it still kind of retains that quality in the um, in the. It's very durable, very uh, renewable. Um, you can find it online. Um, the information about it. I mean, there's plenty of resources, plenty of links. We'll probably share some. Of that stuff for you guys to be able to see. I throw um, some links. I mean, definitely have some. Uh, yeah. I, of here we have uh, a series of stuff that that we're we've been looking at in terms of a, a bed sheeting or uh, curtains. Another thing with what we were just talking about in terms of uh, insulation and, and being breathable, it, it's really interesting how you can uh, use like how how hemp is almost like a smart plant in a way. Where and again we'll talk about uh, insulation later, but. I just wanted to say about how like you can control your own kind of temperature with your sheets and with your curtain, which would allow you to be less reliant on um, on your heating and cooling sources, and obviously that would have a a, a really beneficial effect on on everything else in, in your life in general as you're uh, saving money and kind of moving to more sustainable resources, right? So. I think that that's definitely a really interesting quality of um, in the fabric sense. And then they're also couches. I mean, even when you look at fabrics, right? So here's here's one of the things that you know I want people to to really understand as you as well. Um, when we look at hemp head to head versus as a fabric linen versus other um, you know materials. Um, let's take an example versus cotton. Cotton is one of the most destructive co- uh, crops to cultivate. I mean, it, it's pretty almost dangerous to to to, to mass produce cotton. Um, bamboo. When people say they're getting uh, bamboo fiber, um, it's usually a lie because bamboo uh, fiber doesn't actually exist. Um, you know, they 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 right, actually the FTC. FTC, listen to this, the FTC requires companies to state rayon from bamboo in whatever bamboo fiber material 
Mm-hmm. So it's just another so form of polyester. Very, very interesting. Or just some sort of mm-hmm. non-synthetic fabric. Yep. Yes. Yep. It's interesting. Yep. I mean, recycle synthetic. Recycle synthetics. Um, synthetic materials, polyester, nylon. Mm-hmm. Um, all those man-made fibers derived from oil. I mean, even um, um, bamboo uh, in a in a in a building sense. Obviously, it's a it's a, it's very sustainable material, but it, it does take five years to grow to maturity, and then you can you can cut it like annually after that. But it's you know the, the a lot of these different products aren't uh, they're they're addressing the issue in the wrong way. You know what I mean, like. As opposed to what we kind of see in these qualities for hemp, it, it's so direct and and kind of fast acting, right? So it, it's no wonder everyone's kind of scared of that uh, of hemp taking over. But uh, it's interesting that you say that about bamboo because uh, I, I've had my own kind of issues with bamboo. And you know what's a interesting? Sustainable thing in general. Linen, right? Mm-hmm. So the natural fiber linen created from like flax plant and Things like that; those would be the closest sustainability competition competitors, right, for hemp and well, like get flax this. seeds. Yeah, they still, yeah, but they still don't stack up on the agriculture area because you know the yield from hemp fiber you could get double of what uh, the linen you can produce with with flax. So, mm. and it also produces a lot more benefits for the soil. Um, to be grown, you know, just a few times a year compared to the the flax, which, um, you know, it actually, you know, a little more damaging. So it's interesting you know, that you a, compare you know, those two. That uh, that that you would say that uh, hemp is really comparable to flax as opposed to uh, mm-hmm. to bamboo or something else. But uh, I mean, it's, obviously, it's, it's, it's comparable to all, but it beats it beats them all. Right. But I think you mean. When, when you're talking about flax, you also can talk about versatility and utilizing the seeds and, and everything else mm-hmm. there, right? Um, but, I mean, all of this is just historical uses, and people have been doing all this forever. It's almost like we kind of went into, like, a, a 20th century time warp, and everyone just stopped, yeah, I agree. <laughs> stopped using the things I that we agree. used before. We went completely industrial, and now we're kind of seeing – and rediscovering some of the oldest things that are out there, right? Especially when we're talking about uh, hemp. Right, right. I mean, it, it's you know the it, it's it's exploding. The industries that hemp is going to be, you know, a part of, and you know, um, a main feature of in going forward, right? Um, I mean, do you know any? Uh, uh, historical uh, uses of hemp here in the U.S. Uh, I mean, well, we've discussed this. Uh, I think it's even in the uh, the knock on hemp video is um, that uh, they were required to grow hemp in the colonial age, I believe. Like every citizen was required to grow hemp. I mean, you hear about the dollar bill. Obviously, I think was uh, hemp paper or uh, hemp fiber at one point. And uh, definitely rope, you know, the Mayflower was probably docked with hemp rope. Right. I mean, there, it probably had hemp. You definitely would assume there was hemp seeds in there. Uh, there were a lot of uh, the seeds to uh, the beginning of, of, you know, the hemp industry in a lot of places. Um, I could uh, even talk a little bit about some of the history that I've been able to find um, outside of just kind of what you hear. Um, I mean, you look at, uh, there's something called, uh, from MIT, uh, they have a, an article called The People's History, right? And, and it talks a little, a little bit about some of the earliest uh, findings of when hemp was used, right? So hemp, um, as an example, um, hemp was found um, as a remnant cloth in ancient Mesopotamia, which is currently Iran and Iraq, mm. uh, which dates back to 8,000 BC. Um, hemp is also believed to be the oldest example of human industry. So, I mean, we're talking like... Well, you need rope, one of the, bro. That's what I was saying. <laughs> one of the first... If somebody was trading something like a fish for a rope, you know, like someone needs rope. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, like and yeah, fishing in Mesopotamia, ancient Mesopotamia, in the in the uh, Red Sea or the uh, 
or the Mediterranean Sea would have definitely been likely, right? Um, another example in Lu Shi, a Chinese work of the Song uh, Dynasty, 500 AD, we find reference of the Emperor Shen Nung, um, who taught his people to cultivate hemp for cloth. Um, hemp hemp um, in Europe um, was made uh, approximately uh, in 1200 BC. Uh, from there, it spread to a lot of the uh, ancient world as well. So, I mean, these are just just little tidbits that connect the dots to where, you know, how hemp has actually affected, you know, our history and in, in, in when it's being used as cloth and linen and, you know, you know what kind of well, yeah. great society as well um, utilized hemp. I mean, uh, uh, yeah, you know, just just to give you a taste of that. Yeah. No, but so, uh, you and I were talking uh, the other day. I was telling you about uh, kind of my experiences in Europe and stuff. And it's interesting that you said yeah, France yeah. and England just there and kind of that building the modern uh, the modern landscape, right, is that um, in France and England, hemp has been uh, legal to grow and, and process for, for year, uh, decades now, I believe. And they just kind of, it, it's more uh, along the lines of uh, really – niche thing uh there mm -hmm. are hemp right. home building uh firms they build several homes like uh in the countryside in um uh, out of uh hemp creek in uh, in france and in england and um there are tons of companies that kind of use it for the cosmetic purposes that we discussed with hemp seed oil uh for uh skin products and hair products as well and uh it's it's funny to see it being such a big deal, kind of uh, it, it being legalized in America when these industries have, right. had been thriving right. for so long, right? So, like, even in talking about linens, like you were saying, there are uh, suit companies uh, making hemp suits in in Europe now, and people are kind yeah, of yeah. We heard about a, a company right on hemp entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. You were telling me about them. Um, I think that's, yeah, that's the pretty hemp, cool. The, love this is the, the Hemp Entrepreneur Podcast, which you yep, were yep, on, yep. Uh, was it late or early fall? Last early year, fall last year? Yeah, yeah. sometime last year. Yeah. Um, um, great guys, no. uh, founders of it, and uh, we're, we're really, um, you know, excited to, you know, be able to work with them and, and um, be able to uh, participate in such a, I would say, monumentous uh, type of uh, information source. Uh, Hemp Entrepreneur Podcast is definitely a great resource um, for information. Um, real quick, I do, I do have uh, a little treat, um, information treat, of course, right? That's what we're here for to learn. And uh, um, the Pennsylvania Hemp Industry Council um, has actually. Um, done some research um, in hemp because like we talked about hemp is a very old industry and we talked about some of the old uses in the world right I mean what you know America you know where when we look at the roots uh, we don't always know we hear tidbits right it was a part of like you were talking about earlier the early um, uses and then I mean even it was a the the original draft of our constitution was um, uh, said to be on hemp so uh, let me give uh, let me give you a couple facts I did find um, that were pretty interesting. Um, it's called uh, the 10 things you never knew. All right. So you ready? Mm -hmm. Go for All it. All right. Cool. Let's go. One. And uh, stop me if you want some more detail because, I mean, these, these look Yeah, crazy, yeah. Because you right? just run them off and, like, I'm, I'm pretty interested in, like, fact number one or two. So let's, let's take right, it so, slow you know, for the audience. So first things first, Lancaster County was the hemp capital of early America. Uh, Lancaster County, uh, original hemp field township, was formed in 1729. So a little bit, you know, a little bit before 1776. I could see Pennsylvania America, being like the hemp capital of America back then. That, that makes sense. Look at that, right. Like Liberty Bell so and the hemp field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's really what it was. I mean... <laughs> Uh, ben Franklin, you can imagine all that Just wealth. Just walking around in the hemp field, flying his kite. Pennsylvania, <laughs> you know, using hemp, you know. So yeah. that's, you know, I thought that was a pretty interesting fact. Um, also, Kentucky, it says, that, you know, Kentucky is known as a big 
uh, grower and proponent of hemp. I mean, they've been doing hemp for a long time, mm. but they didn't start until 1775. So compared to Pennsylvania, they're really the ones that are the, the first ones in the, in the industry. Yeah, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So number two, George Washington visited and inspected Pennsylvania hemp mills. Um, that's an like interesting that. thing. Well, like I said before, sure that- they were um, <laughs> they were bound by law to grow hemp. Like people had to have uh, if you had any land, you had to have a, a hemp crop. Yeah. So yeah, I agree. Of course, you had to inspect it, right? P- Pennsylvania third fact: Pennsylvania was actually founded on hemp. William Penn, the founder. Of Pennsylvania 1681 specifically intended for the Commonwealth to grow hemp and the first laws passed by the General Assembly was in was a law to encourage every farmer to grow hemp I definitely got to find that and in 1685 uh, Penn observed great quantities of hemp already growing in his province and proposed that hemp would be among the four staples of trade what do you think about that hmm. Well, I mean, I had right. heard you asked before, like what I had heard about, uh, kind of in a historical context. Um, this, everyone had a law of some kind where it was like you have to do this. Like, there's one thing that everyone has to do. You guys have to grow hemp. You have to use hemp. You have to. But this see, and that. what's it's, what's, what's like I said, the wormhole that we went in, where everyone just forgot that. It became. Uh, I mean, yeah, like literally, drug, the, like, and then that was it. It was, right? it was, it was, you know, and you know, think about how how mystified everyone yeah, has exactly. been for the last eighty years to come from a place where this was a, a part of before America was America. America was using and and revolving around hemp, and that's very very interesting right, you to need see that rope. Rope is so important. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you say rope, yeah. but we're no, talking it's about jokingly, but the um, hemp majority of rope back then was made with hemp, so it's like rope is super also, important. Also, um, we're talking about paper. Paper. So here's that brings exactly. me that brings me to the fourth fact. The fourth fact is remains of old hemp mills are found in museums. Mm-hmm. So huh. the what was and I'll let you answer this. What was Benjamin Franklin's? Um, one of his first keys to to wealth grow hemp newspaper uh, 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 oh oh you're saying that's how one of his like one of the first ways that he grew wealthy all I'm, was in newspaper no no yeah i mean this is some this is a fact mm-hmm. you know he owned I he, he, he owned it i guess i don't newspaper know as much press. about uh yeah, he he. Um, it's very interesting. Like Benjamin Franklin is a very very fascinating person. He had a newspaper one of the printing business. That uh, yeah, hmm. he was the first one. So not even like the Philadelphia Press was the first paper, was the first newspaper, and it spanned all thirteen colonies. So he had the first and only newspaper for a long time. Printed and, on him or not printed on him? I mean, all I know is that wood pulp was not used for paper. Right. But you know, <laughs> that's all I know. You know what's really I interesting know that. though, when you look at kind of the like, if you think about like the like where they were at and like what life was like at this point, right? And um, you got this giant tree, right? And you know, chopped on the tree and you had to figure all that out, right? Or you have like a field full of plants and they just grow back in four months. And then, you know, I'm like, what is a simpler way to make paper? Like, it's just kind of when you think about it, like you really break it down to like, the common sense of it, it would make so much more yeah. sense to use that than to use these giant trees. And you know what's it funny? Takes so long to you'll grow, see, and this and that. You'll see better, more simpler tools uh, when you you pull up the picture for for folks huh. um, from the site. You'll see um, on number four. You'll see actually a couple of examples of kind of the tools. I mean, they're stone tools. I mean, they were grinding uh, things down and then taking the pulp and. Um, putting it through the press, and uh, you know, I've I've actually created some paper myself at um, earlier, and uh, you know, it's pretty it's pretty fascinating. All right, so let's 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 keep it going. Let's keep it going. We are uh, we're halfway through, um, and I think we've learned some pretty uh, interesting things about uh, our, our America so far. So, yeah. hemp, and, and remember, America at this point in time was literally only like the east, <laughs> the east coast, all the way from Maine down to to. Basically, Florida. Well, I mean, they're also um, um, native 
uh, uses for him, right? But I think that's something we should get into a bit later. I think right now we're focusing exclusively on like the colonies and like the mm-hmm. United States of America or whatever it was yeah. known at that time. Yeah. Um, so yeah. um, another thing, hemp was grown for over 260 years um, in Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's interesting that from 1681 until 1840, it was cultivated. And then like we talked about, you know, for different reasons, um, it becomes very political. Um, and um, one of the, the biggest fit factors to the industry of hemp that a lot of people don't know is that um, after 1864, emancipation, um, the hemp industry did change a lot because there was a lot of uh, physical labor that went into producing hemp for our nation. So after that point, you know, once things changed when it came to labor, they were like not interested in going through um, some of the processes. So that I thought that was pretty. Uh, That's interesting. You, know, interesting you never really industry. think about slaves, like harvesting no. hemp and producing and connecting with hemp at right. all. But, but they really, most that likely was, were like there's no way. Not, not most likely. It's I mean, it was yeah, yeah. We still had, because hemp, we still, hemp before crops 1860, existed and they had slaves. So, like, who else? But look, huh. before 1860, 85% of the products that were used were made out of hemp. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, sure. So, I so, I mean, you, you, you didn't have a choice. I mean, the shit was around. No. <laughs> I mean, sorry. To, uh, but, yeah, everything was around. And, you know, it was, you know, really, really great. I mean, um, so let's let's keep going. Uh, the Philadelphia shipbuilding industry um, consumed many tons of Pennsylvania hemp. Um, Pen- uh, Philadelphia had a large shipbuilding industry, and each ship took uh, from 60 to 100 tons of hemp fiber uh, for all of the like you're saying, rope, anchor right. cables, rigging and canvas rope. sales. <laughs> 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 and you know, it was uh, you know, it was it was great to be able to probably produce all of that in Pennsylvania to be able to you know, you know, supply their navy, um, really. Yeah. Uh next thing we're talking about, uh hemp um was grown as an ornamental garden plant at one point. So uh, by the late 1870s and 80s, hemp was flourishing um, as just a plant that uh, amused people. It looked good in the garden, well, and um, remember, so, it grows over 16 feet high. So that I can understand. From mm-hmm. uh, you know, when you go to people's houses and they have like those, uh, it's like almost a bamboo um, fence. You know, like yeah, that's a thing that they, yeah, they line yeah. their fence of bamboo, and like I guess you can't see into the house. I think that would be super cool if you had that, but like. I wouldn't, I would never grow hemp like inside the house ornamentally because, like, when you really think about it, like, the reason it's called weed, right? It's like bamboo, hemp, uh, rattan, a bunch of other stuff uh, are all like within the same category Mm -hmm. as weeds, right? And that's why they grow the way that they grow and so quickly and they're so strong and like durable, whatever. But, like, imagine like a rose by any other name, you know, like, imagine putting a weed. (laughs) In your house and like having but it, no, in a plant. I think I not think they, to they, pick they, it they, off and smoke like, it or anything, but like no, just to no. have it. Yeah, they wouldn't. Uh, I, yeah, I don't. I wouldn't see it used inside um, as much. Right. I feel like outdoors is the main use. I mean, they even um, because it grew so high, um, it could be used. No, definitely, I could totally see that in like a really nice garden. I would do that if my neighbors wouldn't like freak out. Right? No, but look uh, <laughs> for farmers, right? It, it can produce seeds for poultry. So mm. chickens can get the seeds as they fall and it grows. That's an amazing source of omega. So you well, literally exactly. I was gonna say that not only is that feed, it's also very good feed. Yep, absolutely. Right. So there's a there's a couple uses. Bird seed. If you you know imagine you had a little mm. area in your garden, you wanted birds to come. You you put a hemp plant. Trust me, they and, are. And that's what we're gonna rocking. we're gonna have to go into. Kind of maybe even spend like a good chunk of the episode. Just talking about um, hemp uses uh, for uh, farm animals and domestic animals, and yeah, I mean that's that's proof of life. That's just for really cheap, really cost effective application. Yeah, I think think we should do like a whole thing about that. Yeah, Um, I mean there's 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 grain mill applications of of different things. Uh, There's different. 
I was like too much up right now. <laughs> that scale. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, you, yeah, like we don't. Yeah, like I'm just. Yeah. I was just uh, talking about the facts, really, because there, you know, this it, and it spans because what it is. Is this, you know, what's interesting is this list, you know, as we have uh, maybe about two or three more facts to go, this list has already spanned, you know, several industries and, in, you know, what was done in just one state, which is very, very interesting. Um, yeah. So, all right, let's go to eight. There are many oil mills as hemp mills in Pennsylvania. So the byproduct I mean, started of the- off. That's so listen, the byproduct of the industry, of the hemp industry in Pennsylvania, um, was many tons of excess in hemp seed. Much of that seed was pressed in the hundreds of oil mills that existed in the state. Although flaxseed oil was also manufactured in huge quantities, in these same mills, a huge amount of hemp seed oil was also manufactured and used for the same purposes. Hmm. So... I think this also connected to them utilizing um, hemp seed oil for paint, varnish, um, printer ink, lack, uh, lamp oil, um, um, and they even had uh, cannabis drops as well. So, you know, there were a couple different uh, uses in that area when it came to the what they were using hemp oil for. Uh, we just talked about in our last episode some of the things that we're using hemp oil for in the skin and, you know, the benefits nowadays that we're bringing up. Right. Right. And it, it's so, and I understand, and I think I understand the confusion a lot of people have. And I think that that's why we're, I think that's why it's important that like what we're doing right now is uh, explaining what these different uses are and kind of where they come from. So like the thought that the same thing that can produce, um, and cosmetic oil could also produce building materials and it's so confusing but you really have to section off the plant and you have to see it yeah. as different things you know right. like the seed mm-hmm. the bud the stalk and the the fiber are yeah, all absolutely. distinct in their in their qualities and, the, and what it is that they can offer and again yeah. but it's, it's all the stretch of the, the podcast, but um, what were we talking about? We were talking about states, right? We're in, uh, we're talking about Pennsylvania. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's, it's remarkable. It's remarkable. Mm-hmm. So let's finish up. Last well, two. I mean, in terms of, oh, oh we're still talking about, uh, we're still more Pennsylvania facts. <laughs> let's, let's finish up with the last okay, two okay, okay, Pennsylvania okay. facts. Um, right. Nine. Fine linen was made with, from homegrown Pennsylvania um, hemp. But also mm-hmm. good to know. I mean, that's like we said, connects to now. Um, and mm-hmm. lastly, hemp got caught up in the reefer madness scare in the 1930s. All right. Um, as we know, right, on May 22nd, 1933, Governor uh, Gifford Pinchot signed a law banning marijuana with an H. <laughs> the law went into effect on <laughs> September 1st, 1930. Have you seen that movie? Um, it's ridiculous. A full four yeah. years before it was outlawed um, on a federal basis. So this is basically, um, you know, whoever, however this, you know, you know, spewed, you know, it caused, even before it was fully illegal in 1937 to grow it, you know, you know, you had essentially a domino. This is that domino that was happening before that fell that would have kept going and created these snowballs of other things falling and no. um, other people falling in line. Because it's, you know, you have a propaganda from Reefer Madness movie. You saw it, right? I've seen, I've seen Reefer right. Madness it's, too it, many it, times. It's, it's, it's madness. A terrible film. Because think but about it. It's quite funny. Time, yeah. They spent time to, to really put a message out that was completely. Well, no, you've seen those, like even those posters, kind of the older propaganda posters with that stuff. But mm-hmm. it started. It started a uh, an international uh, prohibition it did. or kind of like outlawing it of it because and even. But think uh, about it. I, I, I mean, don't know what the reception in Africa was like before, but we just discussed the other day, in at least in recent history. Um, yeah. Cannabis as a whole in Africa has been like very villainized until like yeah. for now. Now we're slowly seeing more and more countries reopening up to something that everyone used to be okay with 
however 200 years ago you know what i mean it's like I mean, it's so yeah, weird, like but. why wouldn't they get villainized i mean it, you know if you look at if you oh, saw Lafayette, you know you, right? you saw you saw reefer madness so you saw the message was not just it was bad the message was that the people taking it were doing things that <laughs> You're gonna were gonna go crazy and it was black people it wasn't like anybody and everybody it was us that was well, focused yeah. on in this That's- that is a major focus in in the the overall war on drugs and the villainization of. I mean, of I mean, we're talking as a whole. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, reefer madness literally, literally, put us in a a, a barbaric uh, outlook and said we, we turned to barbarians and went after white women. So yeah, it, yeah, you know, we it, attacked the it, white it women. Took, it take because imagine being there at that time. It's like, are you kidding me? Like you're watching this like. Like they spent money to make this, and at that time, that was a blockbuster, you know. So, you know, we have to look at what they were really was trying to Reaper do. Was Reaper Madness say. a blockbuster film? Do you think For that them, that was like? I, I mean, mean, yeah, I have no idea. I guess we could look it up, but no, no. Uh, I mean, but that's so crazy to think. I mean, but think <laughs> about it. I mean, how many films came out in nineteen? 19- 1900s. I mean, no, remember for sure. what, and that's like remember, in terms of the limited number of films that were coming out for them to put out Reefer Madness. Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah. you know because it's yeah it's funny at the same time you know it, it kind of bu- uh, bugs me because at the same time it's like if you think about it at that point in time it must have been hell hell to even talk about this industry because they literally demonized it. Um, in a sense where they were the the victims and we were the demons. Hmm. Sure. So I mean I don't want to get too deep into that, but it, it you know it was pretty er- erroneous what what was done. Hemp offers a sustainable zero waste option to reclaim materials such as coal, concrete, wood, plastic, textile, and replace them with resilient building materials, eco conscious energy solutions and responsible everyday consumer products. With the world in crisis, we're once again knocking at Hemp's door for help. Uh, if we're talking about like, the foundation of a lot of things, that is the foundation for the yeah, war on and drugs. and it started right there. Take place. Right and, and it's so funny that it would interrupt in, in <laughs> right there in Pennsylvania. That's so funny. But it's so funny that it would interrupt a uh, an industrial practice in the process, right? So not to be so focused on the ropes, right? But like it would stop this practice of how we're making ropes for so long or like uh, people who are literally uh, surviving off of this particular plant that they grow on their property and completely legally are now being like cast out and, all yeah. because of a neighboring plant, you know, like, a, a, well, as it is the cousin of the plant, but right. just like another plant completely would neg out all of this, uh, these uses and these applications that, that we've been discussing. It, it, it's, it's, it's fascinating, but at the same time, you know, it's a lot of politics. We talked about this, it's a lot of bureaucracy. So learning about it all, it does, you know, gives you a lot of dots to connect and uh, it's interesting stuff. I mean, I enjoy conversing and learning more, you know? But, I mean, as we're talking about uh, Pennsylvania, and it's funny that you would look that up and that Pennsylvania would really be kind of like the 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 source of it all, right? But, I mean, we have other so states. So many ways, right. So many ways. These days that are opening up for uh, recreational cannabis, they're opening up for medicinal cannabis, but more importantly, the federal law with hemp is now allowing states to uh, to kind of regulate themselves and how they want to open up the hemp industry. Nice. So yeah. we we have uh, Florida. Well, actually, first let's talk about Illinois. Illinois opened up last year like everyone did, but they were a bit more proactive about it. They have now processed 2.3 million pounds Dang, in the first year of legalization. Lot, that's a lot of hemp. Of hemp. A lot right? of hemp. And it's mixed, mixed uses, obviously. Uh, CBD being like a, a big chunk of that. And then 
um, some industrial purposes is, as we've been pointing out, obviously, the industrial purposes are obviously uh, Florida is now uh, opening up <clears throat> for is the USDA just gave them the green light for uh, their hemp program to allow farmers to uh, get licenses. They're being pretty lenient on it. Uh, they're not offering any um, fees per acre, as we discussed last time. And they're kind of dealing more in uh, a 50 pilot program research permits. So that's kind of what they have already right. right now. And they're going to give another 200 for manufacturers and distributors and then uh, 7,000 for retail establishments to sell products. So I guess that just kind of opens up the CBD market there. And that mm -hmm. obviously allows yeah. them to do a lot more interesting things than just your CBD oil at the gas station, right. you know, which is legal in all states. But certain states, I believe, can still uh, regulate how much can be in there so they can be for, you know, like 12% uh, THC, I mean, uh, CBD to 15% or even lower than that. You can really get into kind of almost in the fake territory and with all these horror stories. <laughs> right. Uh, these horror it. stories of no success, right. people not actually feeling, you know, these are, you know, definitely what you want to avoid. So, I mean, you know, mm -hmm. that that's that's very, very interesting stuff, man. I mean. Do you uh do you see any of our neighbors making any changes? I know Canada, like you talked about some of your experience. Can you talk about some of your, more of your experience out in Canada? And, I mean, in Canada, and then, Canada's one hundred percent. Other neighbors to the south as well, if you know anything about them as well. So, uh, oh no, yeah, well in Canada, Canada everything is is one hundred percent uh illegalized. So and that's from cannabis to hemp processing in Canada. They have been working with hemp for quite a while. I know, especially on the textile end. Um, but uh, when we discuss Mexico, though, Mexico, I believe, just uh, legalized uh, hemp and marijuana um, or um, for CBD and for, um, for, for medical marijuana products. Mm. So, like, uh, Mexico is obviously like an enormous place, right? And yeah. to the south of Mexico... Uh, another neighbor that would be there, Uruguay, is uh, uh, legalized two years ago, I believe, and they're recreational and uh, and and medical. But um, but that just means for our landscape is really that with Mexico and with uh, the U.S. and Canada all federally legalizing uh, hemp as for industrial purposes, we're going to see that just kind of explode, right? Obviously, yeah. Mexico wants to take advantage of um, of this entire recreational aspect there. But my real question there is kind of what that does more on the, on the local level. You obviously have a lot of uh, warring parties and uh, figures in Mexico that might not take too kindly to this kind of behavior, right? They probably make a significant profit off of that, but at the end of the day, U.S. is is, uh, is the king of cannabis at this point. So right. Sure. I mean, I, I other, think that's other a countries pretty are still interesting. In the business. It's a pretty interesting perspective to look at. I mean, Canada, Mexico, and U.S. Um, becoming a powerhouse in the hemp industry because it's just these three places will kind of end up you know, producing so much innovation. I'm um, in the area. Canada already has it. Mexico just opened up. U.S. opened up. So, I mean, uh, when when you look at supply chain connecting with innovation, um, I think the, the the world is in for, for surprise over these next um, few years as the as the industry gets to explode. I mean, definitely, uh, as long as it's moving forward, right? Absolutely. That's that's really what we always want is uh, Absolutely. to keep progress it moving forward industry. and kind of see how that will impact uh, us, how that will impact the United States, and how how that will uh, do things going forward. And I mean, even uh, in in Texas, uh, where I'm at, they are uh, starting to issue uh, licenses for grows. They have yet to uh, 
put out the exact uh, stipulations and what it is. But this is start. It's start require, but um, <laughs> they're going to start issuing licenses this year. I mean, obviously, we're we're in a really turbulent time, right? So Absolutely. things are uncertain. Right. Absolutely. We're we're discussing um, all ideas that are possible, plausible, and extremely convenient and beneficial, right? To right. the populace I mean, in general. That's, but that's really what currently we have bigger at. troubles and we have things that we need to face. So we'll see when those licenses come out and we'll see what those stipulations look like. And yep. How uh, how they'll facilitate hemp farming in Texas? Because, like we discussed last time, it's an oil state, and pressure, we don't know how point. kindly they'll take to yeah, exactly a pressure point. <laughs> uh, we'll see how they'll take to uh, other uh, people taking away the plastic business, and making it biodegradable. So, I mean, I think this was a uh, very, very, very informational, educational. I hope we're able to uh, enlighten um, enlighten people. I hope we're able to enlighten people and uh, you know educate people. Um, you know we want to just um, thank you for listening. Um, you know welcome you back. You know we're gonna keep this coming because we we have a lot of information to share. A lot of different applications um, for hemp. I mean and it's, and, it has, and it has a long history. Um, so as we continue to uh, move forward with that. Uh, we'll look to, uh, you know, make it an enjoyable journey for you, right? So uh, remember this, though. If you can knock on wood, you can knock on hemp. Take care. Stay safe. Visit our website to learn more about what we can do with hemp. Follow us at Knock on Hemp.